Hey, how's it going, everybody? Miwa here, and today I'm going to bring y'all a Leafy on Jake deck profile, and I'm going to name this deck profile just a um, the Leaf Never Wilts, and that's just a funny name that I came. I decided to call it because Leafy on is going to be is going to be really hard to just KO with what I'm about to show y'all. And before we get started, I want to apologize on not posting any videos lately. Um, things have been busy with me. Um, with all the traveling and work and yada yada. So I haven't been able to post anything recently. But uh, pre-release for, what was it, um, Lost Thunder happened. I attended that, got, got pre-release cards, got stuff I needed to complete certain decks. And yeah, so with what the stuff I got, I completed this deck. And this was actually one of my on the radar wanted to make because I don't think people got the same idea. I'm no wait, I'm gonna I'm scratch that. I'm pretty sure people did get the same idea on this and I'm pretty sure they're all they're all thinking like this is gonna be a really dumb deck and it's gonna actually be really hard to KO. Cause with all the healing that you're gonna be doing and what Leaf Young will be able to do. So upon that, um let's get started. So you're gonna be playing Leafeon, of course. So with Leafeon GX, you have its ability, um, Breath of the Leaves, where if this Pokemon is your active Pokemon, you can heal 50 damage from one of your Pokemon that has any Grass Energy attached to it. Oh no, actually, correction. It doesn't even have to be a Grass Energy. It just heals 50 damage from one of your Pokemon that has any Energy attached to it. So you can have any kind of Energy attached to it, and Leafeon will heal it. So that's actually really good. And re and its other attack is Solar Beam, which is a grass over colorless. Most evolutions just require the one of energy of its type and the double colorless, which is all which is really good. And it does 110 damage, decent damage. Um we can actually bump that up a decent amount. So and for its um GX attack, um it's Grand Bloom GX, which for each of your bench Pokemon, well bench basic Pokemon. You can search your deck for a card that evolves from that Pokemon and put it onto that Pokemon to evolve it. Then you shuffle your deck. And that's actually really good because of everything that you're playing in the deck. Because you're only playing Stage one, stage one Pokemons. Which means this deck can actually be really fast on getting out what you need. So, you are going to be playing 3 Leafeon GXs. And you're going to be playing... For Eevee with the evolution, with the energy evolution ability, which is whatever energy you attach to Eevee, you search for a Pokemon that evolves from Eevee of that type and evolve it immediately. So Eevee, that's the only reason why we have Eevee decks now because of that Eevee. So you're playing four copies of that. And I do apologize. Like I wanted two more hollows of it, but I could not find it. Sadly, no one at my locals has it. And I've been lazy to order it. Um, next, we're playing three copies of Lurantis, Baby Lurantis, and you play three because of its Sunny Day ability, which bumps up Leaf Yawns or any Grass or Fire Pokemon to attack by 20 more damage. So people will be seeing, will, you'll be seeing a lot more of this card in um, Septal GX decks because of the Dragon Speed mechanic that Septal has. So this card will be getting played in it along with its um, GX form as well, I believe. But all it does is just gives the Grass or Fire Pokemon 20 more damage, which is why I say um, you can bump up Leafeon's Solar Beam by a good amount, making it 130 to 150. Then you play three Fromantis. So, let's go ahead and get those out. So that's three Fromantis. And, of course, you just play the Synthesis one because um, we are playing the new supporter Elm in this. So having the 60 HP Pokemon is really helpful because it breeds them out. And then you can just leafy on Grand Blue them, which is why the deck I say the deck is actually pretty decently fast. And then you stretch your deck for, and then it has the ability where you stretch your deck for Grass Energy and attach it to one of your Pokemon, then shuffle your deck. So it has it has synergy with it. So one one of the new cards we're playing in the deck, and I'm playing three copies of it, which is what I'm saying. Name of the deck, the Grass Never Wilts, or the Leaf Never Wilts. I forgot what I said. Um, it's because you're playing three copies of the new Shaman that came out. 
And you're playing this shaming because it's the floral heal ability, which heals 20 damage from your active grass Pokemon. So you usually, your bench will usually be looking at two shamans and two Lurantis, and then one extra space for whatever you want on there. Mainly because um, Leafeon's ability, you're hitting 50 from itself. If you swap, swap out from another Leafeon to a new Leafeon, you can heal another 50. So that's 100 being healed already. And then you pop Shaman up on that, that's an extra 40 being healed. So you're healing 140 each turn if you can. Which is really good and annoying for your opponent because they can't, they have to legitly one shot Leafeon in order to kill it. And with the stuff that we're playing in the deck, it's gonna, actually going to be really difficult to do that. So, um, as a backup attacker, we're playing the one copy of the new Verizian GX. And mainly you're doing it because of Sensitive Blade. Um, if you play the Supporter this turn, it does an extra 80 damage. So that's 130. You pop two Lurantis out on the field, and that's 170 being dealt. So that's KOing a Tapu Lele right off the bat. And... um. Again, with what we're playing in the deck, you can, um, it can become a static card where it's pretty difficult to KO as well. Um, it has another attack, another, its first attack is, um, Double Draw, which is just, a uh, Colorless, which lets you draw two cards, which is actually pretty decent if it's your, starting your, as your active and you're going second and you need stuff, so Double Draw is actually pretty decent. And then its Jack stack is Breezeway, which lets you put any number of your Pokemon in play and all cards attached to them into your hand. So, it's actually... Not, it's not a bad card. You will be seeing it being played here and there. And then we're playing the one copy of Tapu Lele GX. And I'm going one copy just because of... Um, you really want your bench space to be for um, your Shaman and your Lurantis. Because other, other than that, if you have anything else on there, it's just going to mess up your numbers in a way on what you want to hit. So you, got, you just got to be smart on how you um, use Verizian and Lele. Because it's similar, it's similar as to playing a Marsh Shadow in turn decks where um, you don't know if you want to keep it on the bench to where it might mess you over later in the long later on in the late game where you need a bench space and you can't because your opponent hasn't got rid of that one card and you're just there like, wow. But yeah, so on to supporters. You're going with the standard... Um, Four Cynthia's and four Cynthia's is because it's a shelf your hand, draw six, so it's pretty good. You can possibly go with the four Lily, Lily um, run instead. Um, people go here and there on that. Um, next, we're playing three Guzmas. I don't play four, I prefer three for some reason, but um, uh, seeing how things are going out now, you might want to play the fourth. But that's all just personal preference. Um, three, Tate and Liza, just because I like Tate and Liza. There was a new draw support that came out in, in Lost Thunder called um, Sea Seeker, I believe. And um, I'm, I tested it out in the deck, and in all honesty, I do not like the card. Like the whole ditch, ditch, ditch cards and then draw up to five. Um, I really don't like that it's good in the in Bacephalon and probably only Bacephalon or in a um, baby executor deck to discard energies and then draw but other than that I really don't like Sea Seeker like I think it's it's a good it's an okay card but it's not good good or like great it's a okay for its ability type card but next, we are playing two copies of Professor M. I'm playing two because it just, it's just consistency. I don't want to be like, I need this M to get my Pokemon out. But then the one M is prized. So I'm playing two just because of that 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 reason. And then the one Lily. Just because it's a um, draw until you have six cards. And the reason why I'm playing the one Lily is because mainly with your Lele search, you're just gonna grab you're gonna straight up grab Elms, which is why I'm playing one Lily because there's not gonna be a moment where I'm gonna go for the draw up to eight like we like um before Lost Thunder came out because that's the only reason why you played um more than more than one Lily, just because of the draw up to eight and you didn't have your Bridget card. But now that we have our elms, um, Lily is being played at one. And on to items. So, 
on items. I was, I'm, I was kind of testing out, and I'm still testing out on it. But uh, I do, I would recommend on what to swap out. But currently, I'm playing um, three copies of Ultra Ball, which is just this two cards for your deck for any Pokemon, and add to your hand. So we're playing three copies of that and two copies of um, Nest Balls. The reason why I'm doing Nest Balls is because um, Shaman is a 70 HP Pokemon, which means Elms cannot grab it. So you have to Nest Ball it out. And there will be times where probably um, your opponent's going to forget that, oh wait, Elm grabs 60 HP, not 70. But your opponent still puts down the 70 HP basic because we're so used to Bridget. But that's one reason why I'm playing the, the Nest Ball because Elm, Elms does not grab out. You're a shaman, so you have to stretch it out. Which is the only bad draw to have no Cindy HP shaman. But overall, it's still a good card. So next, we're playing four copies of Mixed Herbs. Just because of, um, one, if you play one copy of it, it removes a special condition. So it removes Poison, Burn, Paralyze, Confusion, stuff like that. But if you play two copies of it at the same time, that's, uh, you heal 90 HP. So... Healing 90 HP, it's really good. Because, like I said, Leafion is your main attacker. And keeping it out on the field and denying your opponent that kill by healing it every time, it's going to get really annoying. They're going to end up guzmining up and targeting your um, shamans just so you can stop the healing. But it's really difficult. And the reason why I say they're going to have to one-hit one KO is because... um. My original plan is to play um, Dumbbells, and that gives Leafeon an extra 40 HP, which makes it a 240 HP Pokemon, which makes it really difficult to KO, because I believe 240 is one of those numbers that's kind of difficult to hit. Um, but y'all can't correct me in the comments if I'm wrong on that, but a 240 Leafeon is pretty difficult to hit, but I cannot find my Dumbbells for the love of me. And I'm just like, wow. So I settled for two copies of Choice Helmet. And it's basically the same the same thing. You go Choice Helmet, your Pokemon takes 30 less damage from GX or EX Pokemon. So it sits an extra Leafy on a 230 body uh, against GX or EX Pokemon, which is good. But I only was able to find two, surprisingly. But I would recommend three, or if you can, four. And... On that, but um, next we are playing um, Rescue Stretcher, and that's just to get um, Pokemon from your discard back on, into your deck or onto your hand, which is really good. But yeah, but over a Choice Helmet, I would possibly play the Dumbbells just because there are Pokemon that are not EX or GX Pokemon, and Dumbbells just works a lot better in that in that case, because like Hoopa and stuff like that. Which also brings me to a point that if you have two Lorantis out on the field, you're going against a Hoopa. As long as you beef up, as long as you um have energy attached to one Lorantis and can attack with it, that Lorantis is one hit KO into Hoopa because with its ability, it's automatically doing 120. So that's good on that. So you have your Hoopa, your Hoopa counter right there. Um, we're playing one copy of Field Blower just because um I really hate trying. Like, if if I can, I will bump this up to two because Shrine's such a, it's such a uh, annoying card. Like, people took Field Blowers out because uh, they're like, oh, Garbodor, Garbotoxin's not a thing no more. Time to take off Field Blower. I kept Field Blowers in all my decks most that I've recently posted. I think except for one thing, Dragonite was the only one that I did not have Field Blower in it because I didn't have the space. But I'm keeping Field Blower in the deck just because Shrine's annoying. You have Fairy Charms that came out. Those are going to be annoying. Choice Helmets are annoying. Like, you still have a lot of annoying cards that are out there that you just need to be able to Field Blower them out. Or if not, you're just going to be giving your opponent the, the advantage by having them out. And then we're playing one copy of the new card, Adventure Bag. And that just lets you search... Your deck for two Pokemon tool cards and review them and then put them in your hand, which is really good because lets you search out your um your choice helmets or your dumbbells or if you're playing other decks, lets you search out choice bands and whatnot. This card's gonna be a main staple in people that make Gen Effect just to get automatically get two tool cards and then straight up attach them so they can go. Oh, I'm gonna go two choice helmets or I'm gonna go two choice bands and deal 60 more damage, which is stuff like that. And if um 
finding fear belt was still around this on a gen with the gen second fight fear belt would be pretty dumb because what you gotta do is on fighting fear belt choice band let's go and then for stadiums you're playing two sky pillars just because you want to deny as much damage to your bench as possible. So if people are still playing on um, Buzzwall and Buzzwall is going to hit the bench for like 30 or whatever. Sky Pillar is your answer on that. Because you want to keep your shamans as much as po for as long as possible. Along with um your Lorantis GX and stuff. Not GX but your baby Lorantis and all that. So you just want to deny as much damage to your bench as possible. And then we're playing the one copy of the new Life Force Prism Star. Which is your other heal card. That heals six damage from one of your grass Pokemon, and it also removes all special conditions as well. So it's really, it's a really good card, and the thing that makes it so good is because of um, since it's a Prism Star, all Prism Star stadiums have the ability that they cannot be destroyed by, it. they cannot be removed by effects like um, field blowers cannot remove them and stuff like that. The only way to remove them, from my knowledge at the moment, is um, playing. A new stadium and it gets rid of it that's the only way i know that it'll get rid of and because it is a prism stadium you can only play one copy if you can play more then hands down sky pillar's gone and life force gg but um yeah so those are all the pokemon tool cards and then for energies you're playing the eight grass energies with the four dcs and then that's about it for the for the deck. Like, it's gonna be annoying for your opponent because you're denying them the KO every turn because you're healing at. If you have everything out, if you have the two Shamans, the two um, Leafions, and then the Life Force active, you're denying them a total of. No, you're not denying. Them. You're healing a total of 200 HP each turn, and that's really dumb because if your Leafion at most survives with at at least 108 they take 180 or they take your or your opponent hits you for 200 exact but you have choice summit on or you have um what's i'm gonna call it mm, dumbbells that's an, i think that's another thing i want i want like i would prefer dumbbells because your opponent legitly has to hit if they hit 230 you're still gonna survive with that 10 hp and then you're just gonna heal it all the way back all the way back to where at most you're gonna be at what like um you're gonna you're only gonna have at least two hundred and twenty HP that was um, that was healed. You, like like you're after you heal, you're probably at two hundred and twenty back, and you just have to heal that extra twenty off. But other than that, like you're really denying your opponent a lot a lot of kills because of it. So like, Leafeon is just gonna be a really annoying Pokemon to KO, especially when you play McFerbs and you're just healing a total of two hundred ninety. But um. Yeah, that was the deck, guys. Let me know what y'all think in the comments. If you think you like it, um, give me a thumbs up on that. If you think it's going to be annoying, give me a thumbs up on that as well. If you want to see more from me, leave a comment on what you want to see next. If you want more in-depth details on what to add on the deck, um, shoot me a message on there. You can also find me on um, on Facebook and stuff. And I usually do Twitch as well. So you can catch me on stream. It's the same as, I believe, my YouTube name, Melee Miwa. So tune in on that. But let me know what y'all think on this. Like, I believe this is going to be, a, it's a fun deck and it's actually really annoying. So, yeah. So leave a like and subscribe. Thanks.